Recently, some of you guys asked me to start putting gushes up my ass during the show. Oh. I guess I read that wrong. Huh. Well, that kind of kills the plan for this episode. Well, in any case, I've been playing a game called Which Way recently, and it's full of clever design choices that have really caught my attention. Which Way's main mechanic has you controlling certain blocks to solve puzzles and make your way through each level. This idea starts off as simple as it sounds, but as the game goes on, it's built upon in some pretty creative ways. So today, we're going to play Which Way, break down its block-pushing action, and talk about how you can design and expand upon your own mechanics. I'm Jack Breen, and this is Hybrid Plays. From the very beginning, Which Way leaves you completely up to your own devices. The game starts off with you falling into a dungeon, smacking your head off the concrete, and sustaining just enough of an injury for your health insurance to kick in. But before you can sue anyone, you've got to find a way out. Rather than displaying text boxes or putting you through a tutorial, Which Way's first instructions are hidden right in the level design. There's a big A on the wall, telling you to jump, and if you're using a different control scheme, the background will update accordingly. So you can jump now, but you can't jump high enough to get out of the hole you're in. So you're bound to try to push one of these blocks, and there you go. Now you know you can push blocks. This is a trend that continues as Which Way goes on. All of the learning is done through simple experimentation. The game teaches you with its clever level design, which in my opinion is always more fun than following a tutorial. I fucking hate tutorials. So right off the bat, we're being encouraged to explore and learn. In the next few rooms, Which Way teaches you its main premise, pushing blocks onto switches. Now I know what you're thinking. Pushing blocks? That doesn't sound very original. Well. Don't jump the gun just yet. Before long, you'll reach this room, where you'll find a vibra- Your magic wand! This is where Which Way really begins. The wand is assigned to the X button, or C key, and is used to manipulate blocks from far away. This starts off as just pushing the blocks without being right up against them, but as you progress through the dungeon, you'll find blocks that behave differently, like these ones that can slide in any direction, or these ones that reflect lasers. Combine these alternate blocks with a few witty level mechanics, such as these block-resistant barriers, and after a while, you have a game that's a lot more complicated than just block pushing. Now many designers, including myself, believe that some of the best games are born from simple yet creative ideas. These are games that come up with a mechanic and run with it. From a design standpoint, a game based around a single mechanic is very appealing for two main reasons. One, it's easier to develop than some sort of open-world RPG with a million mechanics. And two, these kinds of games are really accessible to the public. Something like Red Dead Redemption takes time to learn about the many systems and rules. But with a game like Portal, there's only one thing to focus on. You can make portals. As the game goes on, new hazards and objects are introduced that encourage experimentation within the main mechanic. In a way, the mechanic evolves from something simple to something deep. And it's this evolution that creates an engaging experience. Now I know what you're thinking. Does Portal's main mechanic really change? It's not like you get upgrades to the Portal gun. And you're right. In these kinds of games, it's not always you that's changing. Sometimes, it's the world. This evolution is about the new ideas presented to you over time that cause you to think differently about your main mechanic. In the case of Which Way, your abilities never change. You can jump, and you can spellcast. But every subsequent level introduces new ways to use those abilities, and that's what keeps things from getting boring. Isn't that cool? You guys ought to see how many gushers I can fit in my ass! This video is sponsored by Gushers! Video not sponsored by Gushers, see details below. Before we continue, I want to make something clear. Mechanic is a pretty broad term, so I want to specify that main mechanic means the player's main ability, in this case, spellcasting. A level mechanic is something like the dotted line walls, or these blocks that can move in any direction, or anything else that you interact with using your main ability. Level mechanics are what push the evolution of the main mechanic. By coming up with unique level mechanics, the player will be forced to think about the main ability in different ways. We start off by using the wand to move blocks along the ground. These blocks can jump, but you won't be able to get them very far. Then we find these blocks, which can move in four directions. Around this point, you'll find that standing on blocks while moving them opens up a lot of possibilities. Since these blocks don't obey gravity, you'll find yourself using them like elevators most of the time. Another level mechanic that's introduced around this time is the dotted line wall. You can walk through it just fine, but blocks can't pass it. This limits the use of where blocks can be of service to you, and it makes you think about how to work around the limits of these walls. On floor 2, you'll find the complement to the dotted line walls, these tunnel blocks. 
I kind of like to think of them as air ducts. Blocks can pass through them, but you can't. There are many clever puzzles that revolve around transporting blocks through these tunnels for you to use at specific points in the level. On floor 3, we find these laser shooting emitters and these glass blocks to go along with them. On this floor, you have to use these glass blocks to reflect the lasers around the room, opening doors. The lasers will kill you if you touch them, which adds another layer of thought and caution to these puzzles. Hey kids! Lasers may hurt in which way, but they're harmless in real life. Don't believe me? Try shining them at cars on the freeway late at night. Make sure to aim for the right side of the windshield. Definitely don't tell your parents where you got this idea. To understand which way's formula, we can look at other games that evolve simple mechanics. Let's turn it over to a little game called Curse of the Arrow, which has you traversing each bite-sized level by shooting arrows into the walls and jumping on them. Sounds easy, but every time you shoot, it gets this red stuff everywhere, which spawns enemies. The game starts off by letting you get familiar with your ability. The first three rooms have you shooting arrows into walls and doing some basic platforming. Room 1-4 introduces iron walls, which cannot be shot into. Room 1-5 brings trampolines into the mix. Room 1-6 has you shooting these buttons to toggle these corresponding walls. Now bear in mind, it's not smart to introduce too many mechanics at once, otherwise the player will feel overwhelmed with knowledge. Curse of the Arrow makes a good move here and stops with the new stuff for a while, allowing for experimentation with what you've learned so far, from rooms 1-7 to 1-16. This 10-room period takes the iron walls, trampolines, and wall buttons and combines them to test your understanding of the game so far. Besides these gold keys that show up, we don't see another new mechanic until room 117, where explosive barrels and destructible walls are introduced. And then, in room 120, you have to collect these four spinny cubes to unlock the exit. So think about how each of these mechanics is changing the way you think about your own abilities. Some of them, like iron walls, affect your use of arrows. Others, like the trampoline, change the way you jump. And things like the explosive barrels make you think carefully before making a move, since you don't want to waste your one shot with it. As you can see, there are a lot of ways to give the players new things to do without adding more buttons to press. Another great example is Celeste, the mountain climbing platformer where you friendzone a dude from Seattle. This is another game with a very limited control scheme. You can jump, dash, and grab onto walls. These are the skills that you'll carry with you as you make your way through the game's many challenges. But like which way, each level introduces new ways for you to think about your skills. In level 2, you'll deal with these jelly blocks that you can dash through to propel yourself around rooms and across huge gaps. In level 3, you're introduced to this red grass, which spawns evil goo once you touch it, making it so that you can't retrace your steps. And in level 5, you'll find these platforms that move every time you dash. Once again, all of these mechanics are changing the way we think about our core abilities. At this point, we're starting to see a pattern. There's a really great book you guys should read called Tall, Dark, and Cajun. This thing got me hard as a prosthetic leg. But there's another really great book you guys should read called Level Up, The Guide to Great Video Game Design. This was written by Scott Rogers, one of the lead designers behind the God of War series and the Maximo games. In chapter 12, where he talks about mechanic design, Scott writes, I believe that the best mechanics are also the ones that are the most flexible. By changing the mechanic's context and use, you can create an entirely new challenge. In the preceding section, Scott builds an example of main mechanic evolution by showing all the different ways to interact with pushable blocks. Like we said before, block pushing doesn't sound very interesting at first, but there's a lot you can do with it. You could push blocks to reach higher places, activate switches, block traps, solve a puzzle, hide from enemies, and even kill a boss. It's all about creativity. Just because the mechanic is simple doesn't mean its uses are limited. In the same chapter, Scott breaks down how to correctly introduce level mechanics. Let's take any given level, chapter, or segment in the game. Scott's method is broken down into seven parts, but I'm going to shorten it to make it more applicable to a wider range of situations. First is the introduction of a new level mechanic. It's displayed in a low-risk situation so that the player can begin to understand it without much risk of failure. For example, in Celeste, the first time you encounter these moving platforms, it's over solid ground, so you can play around with them without worrying about falling to your death. After the player gets the chance to experiment, the second step is to combine the mechanic with hazards. Things like bottomless pits, spikes, and enemies are combined with the mechanic to factor in the element of danger. Now that you know how these moving platforms work, your skills are put to the test in increasingly challenging situations. The last step is to mix this new mechanic with previous level mechanics. Now we see the moving platforms mixed with the trampolines. Mechanics essentially go through a kind of life cycle here. The end goal of every mechanic is to be factored into a normal gameplay scenario, around the same time that you've mastered how to use it. 
it's time for a mousetrap break, sponsored by Mousetrap. Accessible games are great for players because they're easy to learn and fun to master. But they're great for designers too, because they don't require too many systems or assets to develop. Once you come up with your main mechanic, the rest of the process is just figuring out new ways to play with it. But just because these games are good starting points for developers doesn't mean they don't take talent to design correctly. And that's exactly why we've looked at Which Way today. This game has a simple main mechanic that's fun to play around with and evolves successfully over time. The pacing is great, the puzzles are clever, and the introduction of new level mechanics is smooth and clear without ever resorting to tutorials. Which Way is a super fun adventure that anyone can enjoy no matter what the skill level, and it deserves to be mentioned along with the best of its kind. I had a bunch of fun playing it and even more fun learning from it. So before I sign off, it's time to review what we've talked about today. The first step in making a game like this is to come up with a main mechanic, basically the player's main ability. Which Way has its spell cast, Curse of the Arrow has its arrow, Celeste has its dash and wall grab, and so on. This mechanic can be anything as long as it's easy to understand and leaves room for evolution. The next step is to come up with level mechanics, things that require the use of your main ability. Variety is what's important here. The goal is to test and expand the player's knowledge of the main mechanic by coming up with new ways for them to use it. Remember the guide we talked about, level mechanics should be introduced in a safe environment, put to the test, and then factored into normal gameplay. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like and consider subscribing so you can catch any future episodes right when they come out. I want to give a shout out to my few yet proud top tier patrons who make this show possible. You guys rock. I've got a lot of great games on the horizon for this channel and I'm really excited to see where things go, so stay tuned and I'll see y'all next time. Have a good one, you guys. I've got a lot of great ga ah. I've got a lot of great games on the horizon for this channel and what the fuck Oh I fucking shook it at the wrong time I fucked it up again <laughs> Damn you Damn you mouse trap Now pick the marble up. Fucker. I don't know what I can do with these. How I can fit these in. My ass.